All right, time for more Commodore 64 games. What kind of interesting games could I possibly be playing in this video? Well, you're just gonna have to keep watching. I'm gonna start with Congo Bongo, uh, kind of a Donkey Kong ripoff, I feel, uh, but I was like the uh, 3D perspective. And the uh, Commodore 64 version here looks uh, pretty good. Looks pretty much like the arcade, I would say. Alright, so yeah, I got to this stage and um, I couldn't quite, <laughs> I couldn't get across here. I kept, kept landing in the water. The perspective is very, uh, very difficult to get a grip on here. Okay, I got on the lily pad there. Now how am I going to jump onto the hippo? Oh, I think I got it, but I must have messed up. Alright, here's a game called Crazy Balloon. This is actually a pretty interesting game when you think about it. Really, this balloon just kind of swings back and forth and uh, you have to get to the goal without hitting anything. So there's a little bit of a strategy element involved. Uh, this one's way more complicated. Oh, it looks like a pumpkin. Yeah, that's appropriate for Halloween, isn't it? Oh, be careful. Oh, just barely made it. And now, oh, I guess I have to get back to that Spot at the bottom there? Okay, there we go. So it's almost like you have to fly up and collect that big rainbow square thing. Oh, crap. And then get back to the uh, the timer rainbow square. Okay, I don't know. Oh, man. This seems like the better way to go because I don't know what that magnet does over there. I'm afraid I get stuck in that magnet. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Great. Now how am I? Oh, almost got it. Oh, man. All right. I think this one is Crazy Climber, but it doesn't feel like an official Crazy Climber. It kind of feels like a homebrew game. And uh, I tried, you know, going up the middle a bunch of times and I didn't have any luck. So I thought, oh, I'll just go up here on the side <laughs> and see how far high I can get. I got pretty far. But uh, this game is kind of... Yeah, it's kind of boring. Especially when you just get hit on the head straight away. Alright, this one's called Crazy Kong. I thought this was going to be the, um, there's like a hack of Donkey Kong in the arcade called Crazy Kong, and I thought that that's what this was going to be, but clearly it's not even, I mean, it's trying to be a Donkey Kong game, but it's, it's just, I don't know, it's weird. I thought I had more time on that hammer. What the heck? Okay, I think this one is called Dandy. And I remember there was a gauntlet game for the Atari called Dandy Dungeon. And I'm, I'm guessing that's what this is. But check out the graphics in this. They're pretty awesome. There doesn't seem to be any music, though. But the graphics are pretty good. At least the background graphics. The character graphics are kind of uh, eh, black and white. But still, I, I don't know. This looks good. I like this game. Dandy if I'm not mistaken, was the inspiration for the game Gauntlet. And uh, it, it was, you know, a computer game. And uh, just basically running around a dungeon and killing bad guys. Alright, so I have no idea what this game is. It looks like something somebody wrote in BASIC, maybe? Because the scrolling is really, really bad. And I thought I could collect that thing, but obviously not. All right, here's Dark Man. Now, this game is pretty awesome in terms of the graphics and everything. I mean, it looks, I'm not gonna say it looks 16-bit, but uh, it looks, you know, almost like an NES quality. But uh, yeah, this game looks really cool. All right, here's a game called The Dark Sword, another really amazingly graphic game that, honestly, I'm kind of jealous that uh, Commodore had such an amazing looking game. Yeah, I don't recall any Atari games looking this cool. I mean, check out the background, it even has like parallax scrolling. Oh, water dripping, that's a, a European uh, European trope, so this has got to be a European game. Almost kind of reminds me of Castlevania, if I had a whip. Uh, here's a perennial favorite, David's Midnight Magic, although I 
couldn't quite figure out how to move the other flipper. I'm sure it's a key key press on the keyboard somewhere that I missed. But uh, yeah, I used to play this on the uh, actually the Atari 2600 quite a bit. It has a pretty decent version. But this version looks just like the Atari 8-bit version too, which I would have played back in the day. And this one's called Death Zone, which clearly is just kind of a Space Invaders ripoff. But uh, it's got a lot of different things to it. Different colors, different enemies coming after you. Pretty good music. This is a pretty fun game. I played it for quite a while. Alright, this game is called Deflector, which is a pretty neat premise for a game. Apparently you just have this laser and you're trying to use these mirrors to bounce the laser to a goal somewhere, which I think the goal is up there at the top right. It looks like a missile. I can't... How do you get that thing out of the way? Maybe you can't. Maybe you have to figure out a way to get the the laser up to it. But it doesn't look like... I don't know. It doesn't look like there's any way to do it. Everything's blocking it. All right, this one's called Devil's Gallery. I don't know, I found the jumping kind of funny. <laughs> the way he like flips over head, head to toe like that, that's pretty funny. I don't really know what I'm doing in this game. I couldn't quite get up to that second level. All right, this one is Die Hard. For the Commodore 64 and this might be the best 8-bit Die Hard game I've ever played. I don't know that may be faint praise but um, you know the NES Die Hard game is pretty terrible but I mean this looks like Die Hard to me. I mean this is what I would have expected to see in a Die Hard game running around beating up guys. <laughs> you, you boys smoke too much. I'm pretty sure I have to go find the bombs um, before they open the locks and I just keep running into bad guys and punching them uh, and it shows that I have a gun down there It looks like I have eight bullets, but i um, not sure which key press to use to get the, the gun That would have been fun to use the gun on these guys But yeah, this this the graphics look good and this is what I would have expected to see in a diehard game <laughs> Ninja John McClane all right, here is one of my favorites, Dig Dug. And uh, this looks very much like Dig Dug, although the rocks are gray. Why Why are the rocks gray? It, that's that's kind of weird. Usually, I'm used, to, I'm used to seeing brown rocks. And you gotta be careful when dropping the rocks on these guys. I tried to get the Frygar there too, but I couldn't quite get him. That's a pretty decent game. All right, here is uh, Dizzy. I'm not sure which Dizzy game it, this is. This could be the very first Dizzy game, I'm not sure. But it's got interesting graphics, like they're kind of... They're not like multicolor, they're kind of monochrome-ish. Each little section is monochrome. I don't know if that's like a ZX Spectrum thing, and I can't believe I say Z when, uh, yeah, I guess that's just the English way of saying Z. But I got stuck down here in these bones, and I couldn't couldn't get out. All right, here is Donkey Kong Jr. And as you can see, the graphics in this game are so so good. Although I don't really care for the way Donkey Kong Jr. goes down the uh, the vine. He should be sliding down the vine, not crawling down it. Graphics are just way better than the arcade, which is awesome. Alright, here is the... well, this really should be the third stage, not the second stage. It always kind of bothers me the way some of these uh, home conversions don't put the stages in the right order. The Atari 8-bit versions are always in the right order, at least as far as I know. But uh, this one... this one did stage 3 for the second stage. And then this is stage four, but it's actually the third stage I'm playing. 
which this is all just kind of electronic. And here's Donkey Kong, the original Donkey Kong, which looks really, really good. Aside from the fact that the platforms look, look a little squished. But, you know, I guess that kind of looks that way on the Atari 8-bit, too. I like that this version has the appropriate number of platforms. Sometimes it's tricky getting Mario up that ladder. It's not quite as forgiving as the Atari 8-bit version is. And also, look how slow Mario walks. Oh my gosh. He walks about half as fast as I've ever seen him. I got a good number of uh, fox fires on this one. Those guys are tough to get. Come on up here. Oh, yeah. Good music, good sound, good graphics. Alright, here is another version of Donkey Kong with a smaller Mario and uh, bigger platforms and what looks like more detailed graphics. I get the feeling this is a homebrew though. Because Mario looks kind of like he does from like the later games. And uh, here's the rivet stage which should be blue but is green here. Also Donkey Kong himself looks a little a little derpy I guess. And these Foxfires are unrelenting. I thought I could get up there and get that hammer first but uh, apparently not. Alright here is Double Dragon, one of my favorite beat-em-ups of all time. This one appears to be only slightly better than the Atari 2600 version. <laughs> I don't hear any music. I mean, I'm used to hearing the Double Dragon music here, but there's nothing. And uh, this is a different version of Double Dragon, which looks a little bit better. I don't know if it plays much better, but I don't know. It seems to look better. Although, I don't know. The graphics look kind of... Brown? Should those rocks be gray maybe in the background? I don't know how well you could pull off Double Dragon with one button though. Alright, here is one of my favorite uh, basketball games of all time, Double Dribble. And I played the heck out of this on the, uh, the Nintendo. And this is a fairly, fairly good representation of a Double Dribble. Although I stink at it. Obviously the computer is going to be wiping the floor with me since I'm just now playing it for the first time. The only thing I haven't seen is the, uh, the little cutscenes that appear on the NES version, but I didn't get to do any slam dunks either. Alright, here is Dragon's Lair, and this game severely reminds me of the Atom computer version. Which uh, I used to play on my friend's Coleco Atom. It was on a tape, strangely enough. And to be honest, I never really cared for this version of uh, Dragon's Lair. Especially since I can't get very far. <laughs> okay, here's Elvira 2. Was there an Elvira 1? And this appears to be like a point and click adventure kind of game. But uh, the graphics are really, really good. If I knew what the heck I was doing. I feel like a game like this really deserves to be on more of a 16-bit console with a mouse. And uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure the Commodore 64 had a mouse, so hopefully it's compatible with this game. Black Widow Productions. Alright, here's The Empire Strikes Back. Which is very similar to the Atari 2600 version of the game. Where you're a snow speeder and you're, you know, blowing up walkers and stuff like that. But this is a little bit more expanded in that you start out by shooting the scout walkers or the uh, ATSTs. And 
And then after you blow those guys up, you go ahead and uh, take on the uh, the, the big AT-AT walkers. And I think in the 2600 version it takes 42 shots to blow them up. I'm not sure how many shots it took to destroy this guy. But I really love the graphics in this. Incredible. Oh, and my uh, transport has successfully escaped. And here is the Empire Strikes Back arcade version, which... This was actually a uh, conversion kit for the original Star Wars uh, game. I guess when uh, arcade operators got bored with the game that they had, they could send away for a kit to convert it into a different game. And the wireframe graphics in this are pretty good, although it's a little bit slow. Crazy to me that they would attempt doing something like this on the uh, Commodore. It's a fairly good representation of the arcade game, except, of course, it's a little bit slower. And I couldn't figure out how to shoot the, uh, the tow cables. Probably the space bar. And uh, here we are being attacked by the TIE Fighters and Darth Vader's Star Destroyer there in the background. And somehow I got a Jedi letter. I have no idea how I got that. And then here's the asteroids flying in. You gotta avoid them. Oh, I hit one. Don't hit the asteroids. And I'm not sure what the title of this game is, but I don't know, it was pretty fun for a few moments. Not very long though. Uh, here's another game that I can't remember the title of. I thought the graphics were really, really good in this, although clearly it's some kind of puzzle game that I have to find a way to get those, those statues to stay open so I can get out of here. Keeps teasing me though, it keeps opening up, say, hey, you want to come out? And then I get close and then, uh, sorry, psych. <laughs> All right, here is the Evil Dead. I guess I'm playing here as Ash. And I got a sword, and that looks like a swing on the front of the cabin. I'm going into the cabin and being attacked by deadites. Oh, what happened to my sword? Is it loading again or something? I'm not sure. And going deeper into the cabin. Oh, there's a fireplace too. Being chased by legs and weird things. Alright, here's a game called Exterminator. This one was an arcade game by um, the same uh, folks that did uh, Qbert. In fact, the programmers of Qbert made this game too. And uh, that's the programmer's daughter's bedroom right there. And basically in this game you're a hand and you have to supposed to shoot the bugs and squish the bugs and kill all the bugs. Alright, that's going to do it for now. I will play some more Commodore 64 games in the next Commodore 64 video. Stay tuned.